Welcome to BrightSquid Secure Mail. In this short video demonstration, I'll be illustrating the basic process for composing, receiving, and managing secure mail messages. The BrightSquid Secure Mail service is a web based application that allows medical providers to exchange healthcare records in a secure and compliant method. Messages may be sent to other collaborators, either within the same clinic that you're in or external clinics. There's also functionality for communicating directly with patients. Let's have a look at how it all works. To begin with, as a web-based application, everything you do within BrightSquid Secure Mail happens entirely within a web browser. That is to say, I'm using Firefox today, but you can just as easily use Microsoft uh, Internet Explorer, the Google Chrome web browser, as well as browsers on mobile devices like iPads, iPhones, and Android devices. As long as you're connected to the internet and you have an up-to-date web browser, you should have no problem accessing BrightSquid Secure Mail wherever you are. The login page is at health.brightsquid.com. And once you arrive at the login page, you'll enter your email address and password to begin. If you don't have an email address or password already established, speak with your clinic administrator. So today I will log in as a pretend made up user by the name of Clara Barton and I've entered her login information and I can click the login button here to begin. Quick note, if you ever have any issues accessing your account, you can contact us for help. There's a link down here and a live chat option over on the lower left hand side. However, the most common question we get on our support team is how do I forget, how do I reset my password? And the forgot password button is right here under the login button. Select that, we'll send you a password reset email, follow the instructions, and you'll be back on track in no time. So let's log in as Clara. Once I log in with my authorized information, I'll be taken to my BrightSquid Secure Mail inbox. If you're seeing Secure Mail for the first time, this is where you might notice how much the service looks like traditional old fashioned email. However, make no mistake, BrightSquid is Secure Mail is not the same as regular email. Regular old fashioned email lacks all of the security, compliance, and encryption required for the safe transmission of healthcare information. The, the BrightSquid Secure Mail service is purpose built for healthcare information. So you can upload and transmit healthcare information with the security of knowing that it's being handled appropriately. However, since it is so much like regular email from a, a user interface point of view, it's very easy to use. So as with traditional email, over here on the left hand side of my screen, I have a variety of different tools that are familiar and similar to what we're used to with regular email. I have my inbox, my drafts folder, sent messages, trash, and so on. There's even a couple of directories down here of professional users. And if your clinic in a, um, works with patients directly through secure mail, you'll also have a list of patients that you can access and, and exchange messages with. So let's take a look at a message that we've received. So here in the center column are the messages that I've received. And if I select any one of them, the content of that message is displayed on the right hand side of my screen, like so. Now this is a message that I've received. Remember, I'm Clara Barton. And this is a message that I've received from a Dr. Pierre Fouchard. He's typed a short message here, again, as like with regular email. And he's attached a couple of PDF documents. Now, as you'd obviously expect, these PDF documents can be downloaded and saved onto my local computer. There's a little download icon. Anytime you point your mouse cursor to one of these icons, the download button will appear. Uh, if you have multiple files, that is to say five to 10 or maybe 20, there is a download all option over here to the far right hand side. Now, in addition to being able to download and view the files in the appropriate piece of software, you can also preview any files that have been sent to you that are in an image based format. So by that I mean PDF documents, JPEGs, X-rays, other things that are visual in, in nature can be opened up and displayed and previewed as I'm doing here with this PDF document that, was, that I was that I had received. You can return back to the message by clicking close and you'll notice there's another download button here as well. Um, as with regular email, any messages that I've received, I can of course reply, reply all, or forward, keeping in mind that the forward button will only allow you to forward it through the Secure Mail service. That is to say, you can send it to other BrightSquid Secure Mail users. Now, there is a facility whereby you can invite new users to join Secure Mail if they don't already have an account. And let's have a look at that right now while we're on the topic. 
So following back on my email uh, analogy, I'm going to click on the Compose button up here, and I'm going to compose an entirely new message. So we'll click on that, and we get into the message composition screen. Now, as with the previous screen, this looks a lot like regular email, in that we are asked to enter a name, we have to address the message, enter a subject line, what's the message about, and then of course the body of the message goes here, and any attachments, optionally, would go over here in the attachments section. But let's take a look at how we address messages through BrightSquid Secure Mail. One of the things that keeps BrightSquid Secure Mail safe and compliant for the transmission of healthcare information is that we're a private closed system. That is to say, the users that are registered on BrightSquid are known to BrightSquid. They've all been invited, they've been vetted, and they're trusted partners or trusted users of our service. Unlike traditional email where anyone in any country can claim to be whoever they would like to be on a regular email service, with BrightSquid Secure Mail, it's a little bit different. So when I'm composing a message to someone, I have to keep that in mind that I'm either sending it to someone who's already in BrightSquid, or I, as the trusted user, would be able to invite someone um, that I trust, that I'm vouching for as being a, another trusted user. So let's take a look at that. In the To field, I can enter an email address, a name, or a clinic. I'll use the email address here, and I'll type in the email address of Dr. Fauchard, because I just saw that message from him a few minutes ago. And when I type in the first couple letters of his name, as with regular email, sorry, the first couple letters of his email address in this case, uh, because he's already in my directory and he's a trusted user, he pops up automatically in my autocomplete and I can simply click on his name to address the message to him. Now that's very easy to do. However, it's almost just as easy to send a message to someone who doesn't have a BrightSquid account. And to do that, I'm going to use test user plus one at brightsquid.com. And you can see as I'm typing, it's saying reach searching recent contacts. And then ultimately it says no match found in recent contacts. So that tells me that test user plus one at brightsquid.com is not in my directory or on my buddy list. He's not someone I've communicated with, at least not recently. However, when I click the continue button, the BrightSquid system will search for this email address across the entire BrightSquid community of hundreds of thousands of users. So let's try that. And still no result was found. So that tells me <clears throat> that this email address does not appear anywhere in the BrightSquid directory. But that's no problem, because I can go ahead and send him a message by simply inviting him as part of this first message. So let's click on this invite button. And that takes me into a little side um, process that I need to complete, which is the invitation process. So as I mentioned, as a trusted vetted user of BrightSquid Secure Mail, you have the ability to invite new users to join. And we ask that when you're inviting someone, that you specify what type of someone they are. And there's three broad categories here. There's patient, which is relatively self-explanatory. Uh, colleague within my practice. Now that's going to be another coworker who works in the same clinic or office as you. It might be a new doctor, a new clinic administrator, a new receptionist, or what have you. But this is someone that works in your clinic. And lastly, colleague at another practice. This is probably one of the most common ones that you'll likely use. This is any professional colleague outside of your office, whether they're a lab tech across town a dermatologist in Saskatoon, or any number of other folks that may need access to healthcare information. Now, some of our users are using Secure Mail to communicate outside of the basic healthcare community. That might include insurance providers, uh, educators, law firms, law enforcement, and that's fine too. All of those folks fall into the colleague at another practice category. So let's go ahead and select that option now, and then we click Add. And that's really all there is to it. Now my message is addressed to both Dr. Pierre Fauchard and to whoever holds the email address test user at brightsquid.com. Let's call him Dave. So now I can just do everything that I'm used to with traditional old fashioned email. Subject line goes here. Here are the records. Body of the message goes here. Dear Dr. F and Dave, here is the thing. Pardon my typos if I make any. And I'm Clara. Let's correct Dave's name, give him a capital D, and that's it. 
So that's me composing my message. Now I could go on and type in something to the effect of, here are the records for Jim Smith. Um, I recently examined him and discovered that he has psoriasis or some other healthcare issue that needs to be resolved. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch me type right now, but that's what I could do here in the body of this message. Now, perhaps most importantly are the attachments. I can attach just about anything to a secure mail message. The only thing will prevent you from attaching is something that may be harmful or something that is extraordinarily large. Now, by harmful, I mean potential viruses. We scan everything that gets uploaded and sent through the service to make sure no damaging files get delivered to a recipient. By extraordinarily large, I mean extraordinarily large. You can easily attach files up to 500 megabytes in size to an outgoing secure mail message. So that might be a CT scan, high resolution diagnostic imagery. All of those things should easily fit within that 500 megabyte uh, limit. In this example, I'm not going to send anything quite so grand, but to do so, I'll click on the Browse button. And this is where I can browse my computer to find files that are stored either on my computer or on an, uh, an accessible network drive. So I can grab, I'm just going to grab these four files all at once and click Open to attach them to the outgoing message. Now, while those are uploading, a quick note on files that I just attached. All these files that I selected were all on my computer in a accessible Windows directory or a Mac directory if that's the type of service or system that you're using. If you have a file stored in some proprietary storage system, like an electronic medical record system, you will likely need to export those files out of your EMR onto your computer's desktop or directory or somewhere easily accessible so you can attach it to the outgoing secure mail message. Now, these four files that I've attached, I picked two types. I picked some PDF documents and I picked two photographs just for the sake of demonstration. And before I send them, I want to make sure I've got the right files. So this is regarding a, a patient named Fred Flintstone. So let's take a look and make sure that's the right file. It's a Fred Flintstone PDF. I can preview it before sending. So as I did earlier with messages that I received, I can preview the file. Same goes for the uh, photographs that I'm sending. Here's a high resolution x-ray of Fred's hand. So that, yep, that's all the right stuff. And then I can click send. Now, before I click send, two quick things I want to point out. One is there are templates available to save you some keystrokes. If you find yourself often typing the same message, you know, dear Dave, here's the thing you asked me for, you can save that as a template and reuse that bit of information. So that just saves you some keystrokes. The other thing to point out is when we send a secure mail message, it actually goes in two distinct pieces. There's all of this healthcare information about our patient Fred, and there's also an email notification that goes to uh, Pierre Fauchard and test user, or Dave's, regular email inbox. So we're going to send an email notification on your behalf to your recipients to let them know they've got a new secure mail message. And if it's the first message, as in the case of our friend Dave here, that'll be their invitation to register for BrightSquid. However, in the case of Pierre, who's used Secure Mail for years and years and years, he's just going to get a fairly uh, generic or terse little note that says, Clara has sent you a new message, click here to go and see it. That email that they receive in their regular inbox, whether it's in Gmail or Hotmail or anything else, will not have any healthcare information in it. It's just a notice. The actual healthcare bit, um, which is the body, the subject line, and the attachments that I've just set up here, all of that information stays within the BrightSquid Secure Mail um, system, which is what ensures its compliance and, uh, and security. Now, one quick note that I should have mentioned earlier. When I invited Dave, Dave has a brightsquid.com email address. And I should point out that you don't have to use a BrightSquid email address. Um, I could use any email address that Dave might prefer, whether it's on Gmail or Hotmail, AOL or AHS, any email address in the world is, is a good one. Um, as long as you, as the inviter, are certain that it's the appropriate address for that person so they can register for BrightSquid and become a bona fide healthcare user of our system. All right, so let's click send. There we go. So now those two things are happening. The email notification is on its way through regular old-fashioned, shall we say, non-secure email. 
And at the same time, all of that healthcare information that I entered for our patient is being uploaded over encrypted channels to the BrightSquid server, where it's going to sit and wait for one and both of those recipients to log into their account and then view that information. Now, while we're waiting for that to happen, let's take a quick look at a couple of other folders here. Um, the draft folder is on the left here under the inbox. That's, of course, any message that you began composing but never actually sent would be saved here so you could recover it. So, for example, if you're writing a, a message to someone and it's quite long and an emergency happens and you have to leave your desk, when you come back an hour, two hours, or a day later, that message will be saved and stored here in the drafts folder. Um, the trash folder I'm not going to talk about too much except to say that it is unlimited space. One of the common questions we get at a, uh, on our help desk is how do I empty my trash folder? It's getting full. Um, it can't get full. There's no, <laughs> there's no such thing as a full trash folder. So don't worry. Anything you put in there will eventually fall off the, the conveyor belt, but uh, you don't need to worry about clearing it out. Now I skipped over sent because that's really the most interesting one. The sent folder here as the name implies, as I'm sure you're familiar with the concept from regular email, these are all the messages that you have sent. Now, here's the message that we just sent to Pierre and Dave a few minutes ago. And if you notice, um, I can review all the information that I sent them. And next to each of their names, there's this little orange box. That orange box is the read receipt. And that tells me whether or not these recipients, both one or neither of them, have read the message. In this case, neither one of them has read the message, and that's indicated by this orange box next to their name. And if I point my mouse cursor there like I'm doing right now, it says unread. So now I know that neither of these folks has read the message yet. Now I sent it a minute and a half ago. I don't know what's happening on their end. Perhaps they're busy. Now the other side of it is if I go to this other message here. Now let's have a look. Here's a message I sent to a Mr. Edward Angle a few days ago. If I point my mouse cursor to that, we'll notice the little green check mark next to his name and the date stamp showing me exactly the minute when he first read this message. So this is how I can verify and confirm that my messages are being read. So if I'm sending something that's of uh, high importance, I can check in at any time and ensure that the recipient has had a look at that message. Now, one last thing. If I'm just going to go to this test message down here, here's a test message that was sent to Dr. Fauchard a few days ago. Um, if for any reason I sent a message to the wrong person, let's say I wasn't paying attention and I chose the wrong Jeff or Dave or Mark, I can actually recall a message through Secure Mail and I can actually pull it out of that recipient's inbox. So if I do accidentally send the wrong attachment or I send it to the wrong person, I can pull it back. And this way, the recipient, the wrong recipient in this case, would still know that a message was sent to them, but they would no longer have access to either the, uh, the content of the message, which includes the subject line, the body, or any attachments that may be there. Now, you can recall a message, whether it's been unread or if it has been read, but of course, if they've already read the message, we can't erase their memory just yet. That's hopefully coming in a future release. All right, just wrapping up the last couple of things here. Um, the professional directory down here, when you first start using BrightSquid Secure Mail, you'll likely have a very small number of contacts in your buddy list, as it were. This will grow over time, and you'll have more and more people on your list that you can send messages to. Now you'll notice this little orange triangle next to our test user one at brightsquid.com account, as opposed to Mr. Angle here, who has a blue star next to his name. The blue star means that they're a registered user, and they've recently communicated with someone in your clinic, probably you. However, the orange triangle says that they've been invited, but their invitation is still pending. So our friend Dave here, as we talked about, has not yet accepted the invitation and joined Secure Mail. So that's a little addendum to the uh, to the read receipt. So now I know whether or not my invitee has accepted that invitation. Now from this directory, I can um, view the recipient's um, profile. And I can also compose a message to them from here just by clicking on the secure mail button here under their name. And that takes me back to the compose page with the message already addressed to Dr. Fouchard. Now, a couple of things here just to finish off. At the very, very bottom of the screen, on the left-hand side, is the settings option.
that allows you to adjust your personal profile. So if you need to change your name from Clara to Clara Bell or from Jim to James or what have you, this is where you would make those types of changes. Now, some of the other settings down here are configured by your clinic administrator, such as the ability, your job title, um, the ability to uh, turn on or off email notifications and things like that. Please speak to your clinic administrator about adjusting those settings because they're likely set specific for your clinic. One last thing on this page is the signature file. This little block of text, which we include in everyone's account, is the main part of that email notification that I talked about earlier. So when I sent that message to Pierre and Dave a few minutes ago, this was the, the content of the email notification that went to their regular old-fashioned non-secure email inbox. You can adjust this. You can make changes to this and have it read whatever you like. Again, speak to your clinic administrator to ensure that you're using something that aligns with the um, policies and procedures within your organization. And last thing, you'll notice up here in the top right hand corner is this question mark icon. This is the help button where you can contact our support team. This is also where you can read up on any information that might interest you about how to use Secure Mail more efficiently. This is our help and support portal. It includes dozens, maybe hundreds of short articles and video tutorials that explain a bit more about how the service works. So if you run into any issues, uh, you can go here. You can download a user guide and print it out and study it over the weekend if you like. Uh, but perhaps most importantly, down here at the very bottom of the screen is our phone number, our email address, and our live chat options. Um, we're available 8 to 5 Calgary time from Monday to Friday, and our support team is always here to help you and anyone that you're attempting to communicate with. So don't be shy and don't hesitate to give out this information to anyone that you may be communicating with over the BrightSquid Secure Mail service. We're here to help as much as we can, um, and we have most of the answers and we can solve most of the issues that you may run into. So that's about everything that I wanted to cover today. Um, I just mentioned, if you if do have any questions after you finish watching this and you want to contact our support team, uh, go ahead and give us a call. We could probably set up a little ad hoc uh, demonstration training session for you at any time, and we can help you answer any questions that you might have. Thank you so much for your kind attention today, and have a great one. Bye now.